Hello, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft Remastered! Today it's going to be a game between Jadong and Cal, also known as Gojila, here on Aztec. Bottom left-hand corner-ish, it is the green Zerg player Jadong. And in the top section-ish of the map, it's going to be the blue Protoss player Gujila, who goes by Cal. As well, one of the best Protoss players on planet Earth, he has fought against Jadong time and time and time again. He did not lose every matchup, but well, let's just say Jadong had the upper hand. He had the upper hand, or else we would know the name Gujila and Cal a little bit more strongly than we do today, right? He was given the opportunity to beat Jadong about a thousand times, and if he'd done it half of those times, or, you know... 40% of those times would have been an amazing feat for him. Would have really put him into the top echelon of StarCraft Brood War players. But still, very good player in his own right. APM over 300 right now. Uh, actually, over 500 for Gujila. We'll call him Cal. I think we're going to go Cal from this point. I'll... Although in the past, I've referred to him as Gujila. A really good ZVP I cast between these two players. He was Gujila. So you know what? It's Gujila. Gujila versus Jadong. Being observed by Magic Gates, which is a pretty fun name, actually. Pull first here out of the Jadong. Got a probe scout running in to see what he can see. And so far, nothing. He has not found anything, but surprise, there's the creep. Oh, good. There's an overlord. This is definitely where Jadong spawned. Good for me. Good scouting. Going to see the pool first play. Say, all right, there's going to be some Ling harassment here. Let's be prepared for that. Let's be ready for it. And see if we can avoid not dying. Or avoid dying, rather, in the first two minutes of this game. Aztec is a weird map. You got this really big, wide open uh, main base that's protected by some cliffs. And then you take your natural on the high ground, as we can see Gujila is doing right now. It's very weird indeed. Not a forge. It is a forge. It's going to be a forge fast expand here. The Lings should be able to get out and get something done. Although this is not a huge area to wall off. So, uh, Gujila is going to save up the money at this point. Oh, there it is. Already threw down the Nexus while I wasn't paying attention. Good for you. And an expansion from Jadong here on his high ground, too. So, drone scouting, trying to see what's up, trying to get some harassment down. Can I send some Lings out or not is going to be the question. And the answer is probably not, based on the cannon placement here of Gojila. It's basically perfect. The Lings, sure, this is not a wall, you're saying, but Falcon, it's not a wall. You're correct, it's not. The Lings will try to run past, but they'll get hit by the cannons, and enough of them will die. That it's just not cost efficient for Jadong to really even try it. Unless he goes for a lot of lings. Which, this probe is here to scout. This probe is here to say, okay, if there are 15 lings coming my way, immediate finish walling this thing off. If it's 6 lings coming my way, as these ones are, not as big of a deal. Ooh, got caught on that ramp. 6 lings on the way, and yeah, not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. One cannon, this is a little tiny thing to squeeze past here. This probe, can she make it home is the question. Why do I think probes are girls? I don't know, assuming it's gender. Well, no, it didn't, absolutely 100% did not make it home. So these lings going to come up and try to get something done, but just more of a contain, I think, at this point. Probe's holding the wall. That gateway is going to finish, and yeah, the lings really aren't even going to try right now. They think about it, and think about it, and think about it, and put some fear of Zerg into the Gujila, but as it stands, that cannon hits hard. That cannon two shots lings. And sure, you could probably fight your way through this and kill one of these probes and get through, but the cannon's hitting you the entire time, and then suddenly you only have two or three lings remaining instead of six, and your ability to really destroy the economy of Kujila is thrown into chaos. Third base down in the bottom right here for Jadong, as is tradition. Third bases on Brood War maps are often very far away for Zerg, so they've learned they've learned to adapt. They throw down sunken colonies down here, they throw down evolution chambers to help wall off against zealot harassment. And is that a... That's a Hydralisk Den. Four-minute Hydralisk Den from Jadong. Ling's holding the front here, too. So, what is Gujila up to? Honestly, not much. Cybercore just finished. So, you can't get any higher tech before now anyway. Is that another cannon? Yep, another cannon in case more Lings show up, in case a big flood shows. Because right now, uh, Gujila is playing in the dark. There's no blue presence out on the map at all. Zero. He probably assumes there's a third base down here, but can't tell that it is present and so just it could be a huge ling flood so you get the second cannon and you start building a uh, stargate so it is going to be a stargate opening here we've seen a lot of this from time to time and a citadel of a dune so we could see dark templar corsair which is a very valid strategy jadong is pretty used to it though 
So I don't think he would necessarily die to it is the problem. So if you're Gojila, what do you do in this situation? Do you feel a little helpless? You're like, I'm playing against Jadong here. I can try to go DTs, but he'll protect his overlords fairly well. I can go Corsairs, but he's got Hydras out already. And it just it could feel a little bit overwhelming, but his APM is staying up there. 348 on average throughout this game. He stopped spamming as much, and that's probably a good thing. All right, so Hydras. Do we're getting the... Getting the upgrade for range on those guys. Groove Spines. I don't think we have. So the Hydras can sit out here and harass this Forge. Boop, boop, boop. And there's only a single Zealot here to stop this. That's the problem with the cannons back here, is that they don't protect your front very well at all. They're great against Zerglings, and they're really bad against Hydra. So this building... Going down. And there's really nothing to save it here. Can't save it. Sorry. <laughs> Make another forge, I guess. Is he making another forge? No, getting additional cannons. No, they can get this gateway. Oh, that's such a problem for Gujila. Oh, that is such a problem for Gujila. He cannot lose this gateway. But he can't stop it either. He's going for a Templar Archives. He's not even getting Zealot legs. Ugh, straight up off the bat. Losing a gateway and a forge. The wall is intact. Gujila's done a good job making sure the wall is still intact. It can't be broken by these Lings and these Hydras. Definitely not, but ugh, that hurts. That hurts really bad. Corsair is hunting for overlords and might find one here. Is there a spore colony? Nope, but there's no overlords either. How about in this location? Uh, there's a Hydra. A Hydra down below, but the splash damage pretty good. But no. Oh, there's multiple Hydras. Just kidding. They were hiding under those overlords. All right, so Gojila has set up a contain. He's got a very nice contain out the front door. Overlord scouting in, sees the new forge. Sees the Stargate continuing to make things. Sees the Citadel of a Dune. And might actually end up scouting... Uh, I don't think it's scouted the Temple Archives, but I think you can assume that that's going to be a thing. Considering the fact that there is a Citadel of a Dune present. Metabolic boost on the way. Jadong finally getting speed for his Lings. And a Spire just about to pop for him, too. And in fact, here it is. Hello, Mr. Spire. Nice knowing you. Corsair, trying to find overlords to hunt, but we get so protected, so protected by these Hydras, just making it really, really difficult on the Gojila to do anything here. He is contained, he can't get a third base, he can't put any pressure on Jadong's third base. DTs are out, though. Did more buildings die down here, or is that just leftover wreckage from the previous ones? That's weird it hasn't gone away, isn't it? All right. Oh, look at this play. The Corsair is taking down the Overlord. So there's no detection. And now we have to get out. Now the Hiders have to run. They don't have the speed upgrades. So it's going to be a little difficult for them. But the Zealots don't have speed either. And Dark Templar aren't actually all that fast. So uh, the Hiders should be able to get out regardless. Look at how... <laughs> uh, poor Zealot. He needs Zealot legs real bad. But it's, it is being researched, actually. It has been started to being researched at this point. Here is our wall of attempted sunken colonies and evolution chambers and stuff because the attack is coming. Oh, the Scourge are out, though. The Scourge are out for blood against these Corsairs, but there's no detection present. Here we go. Oh, Overlord pops just in the nick of time. Oh, are these guys going to get a hit? They're, oh, they are the teeniest and tiniest bits faster than Corsairs are, but nope. Assuming, yep, pulling back to the cannons. Don't want to die. No reason to die unnecessarily. That was a Scourge hit. Not quite sure what it was, but Scourge hit something. All right, so DT Zealot trying to make it happen. This Overlord is placed perfectly to cover detection of that whole front door. Third base, yes. Establishing a third now is Gojila. Once he's broken out, it was time for the third base. Lurkers on the way for Jadong. He's got a Hive coming in, two at the eight-minute mark. And Gojila's like, ah, I ain't going to use these guys for anything. Sure, I broke the front, but I haven't actually killed anything with them. These guys don't have kills, right? Correct, they do not. Dark Templar has a kill. All right, so there are some kills here. Corsair really going for these overlords. The splash damage helping immensely here as well. Oh, the detection. It's gone. Detection's gone. It's time to move in, DTs. And they do. Hacking away. At the wings. Oh, are they trying to splash damage these DTs by attacking their own things? They are. Oh, Jadong, you're so good. So the DTs can't, or uh, the DTs are not visible to the lurkers. But if they attack something nearby, the spines will still come out and the splash damage will still hit enemies. So that's awesome. That was brilliant. Took some shots on his own sunken colony, but kept the DTs away. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Did he? Oh, crap. 
Well, something shut down this third base that Gujila was trying to get. Scourge running around. Lurkers setting up a contain at the front door here. Do you have detection for the lurkers? Observatory is done. Observers in production. Scourge really want to kill those observers. It would be nice. So third base warping in now for Gujila. Better an attack this way. Zealot with legs getting chased by Zerglings with speed. Lurker. Ah, I assume this is what happened before. Lurker is just going to town on this expansion of Gujilas. Is there. Where are the observers? Here we go. Observer coming in. Alright. So the Nexus is injured, but it's not dead, and that's a huge deal. Corsair fleet flying on into Jadong's section of the map to try to kill stuff. Fourth base is done for Jadong. Third base is just now coming in for Gujila. High Templar are out. Is Storm researched? I'm not quite sure yet. I have to assume if you're moving out with a High Templar, it is. Because otherwise, why are you here? It is 112 to 81 supply. Gujila is up. Corsair is trying to see other overlords over in this fourth base. No, actually. Hmm. Could maybe get something done, but these are creep colonies that will probably turn into spore colonies. No big deal. Alright, shuttle. This, this, this is a Templar drop. This is High Templar and Dark Templar drop. Spore Crawler present, though, which really does shut this down pretty nice. Storm on the drones, getting several casualties. Losing a Corsair in the process, but the shuttle lives and everybody inside is still alive. So, decent harassment there. Got some stuff done. So, again, up 122 to 88 supply is Gojila. This third base is going to help him immensely. This poor pylon is already on fire. Here comes a bit of a Ling attack from Jadong, which is going to run into a bunch of Dragoons, which is probably their ideal target, actually is as they are really, really good against Dragoons. Plus one attack done on those guys. Plus one, plus one on the Lings. Ugh, get out of there. Get. Are you going to fight this? I guess you kind of have to. Maybe a Storm's available? Alright, there aren't enough Lings to really make this a huge problem. And the Lings all do get cleaned up. It's just a lot of these, uh, a lot of injured units in this army right now, as we can see. No, no. Shuttle, gonna do another Templar drop. Very nicely done. DT's getting some extra kills here too. Oh, did he get left behind? Oh, he's killing stuff. That's pretty good. He dead. And here comes the attack at the front. Dark Swarm is already done for Jadong though. He's got Defilers out. Uh, yeah, the Dragoons are effectively useless in this situation. They, just, they decide just to retreat from that location. They're not breaking this. Not Lurker Sunken Colony. Uh, not with just Zealot. Anyway, you gotta use some Storm, gotta use some Reavers, which he is working on. He's getting uh, Plague for the Defiler abilities. Sorry, that's Jadong. Protoss Robotics Support Bay. Out of Gujila. That's gonna be where those guys come from. The Reavers. Zealot. With plus two attack, really good against Lings. If the Lings are just 1 1. I know I probably shouldn't have to tell you that, but they are pretty darn amazing. Alright, so we got our Zealot Dragoon composition here. Just gateway units for the Protoss player. He's gonna try to go for this thing. I don't know. I don't know if I believe. Observer scouting this thing out. Observers are gonna help the Dragoons pick these lurkers off. There's the Dark Swarm, though! So, no. Storm attempts here. Scourge getting some hits on Corsairs. The Storm Drop doing some work there at the main base, but the Dark Swarm makes the Dragoons... They can't break it. They cannot break it here. Jadong is playing this so, so well. You juking back in? Maybe juking back in. Maybe doesn't have enough energy to juke back in. But fourth base is done now for Gujila. It's four base to four base. He is ramping up quite nicely here. He's making Reavers. Making additional High Templar 2. Getting Kaidaran Amulet upgrade for the Templar to increase the maximum energy they can hold. And Gojila marching across the map. I don't know. What's your plan? What's your plan for dealing with the Dark Swarm? This Defiler has almost... Well, that one has almost full energy. This one has like 50% energy. Or possibly less. Where did our shuttle go? I feel like there was a shuttle down here a second ago. No, it's dead. Maybe it got scourged. I feel like it very, very possibly could have. What is he... Oh, he's killing his own building. I was like, where's the blue? There is no blue. Attacking my own stuff, says Jadong. 
So just holding map control a little bit here is Gujila, which is good for him. Map control against Jadong is going to help you quite a bit. Uh, Zealot checking to make sure there's not a fifth base coming up from Jadong, and by golly, there is not one yet. But we are hearing lurkers burrow into different locations. That is a lot of lurker. That is eight lurker setting up on this ramp. No coming through there unless you have a lot of storm. A lot of zealots or a lot of archons. Or reavers. I forget about reavers sometimes. Reavers on the way. Corsair do have that plus one attack upgrade, which is going to help them quite a bit. And here we go. Zealots on top of dragoons. Going to get rid of those lings working together. Zergling run bys, actually. Trying to just win on their own in this situation, which doesn't seem like a great idea. And they do have plus two armor, which is nice, but they're just severely outnumbered. You're not going to attack the main army with your run by. You want to attack other stuff with your run by. <gasps> oh, someone's going to be very excited about this Dark Archon. Oh, boy. Mind Control and Maelstrom. Maelstrom, pretty good. Area of Effect spell. It's good against things like Mutas. If we ever see those. Oh, there it is. Maelstrom is being researched. Gujila! Someone is very... I'm, I'm serious. There are several people in my Discord server. By the way, a link in the description to that if you want to come talk StarCraft and StarCraft 2 Brood War, or StarCraft 2 and Brood War. Uh, there's a link to come say hello there. Adrenal Glands on the way from Jadong, but yeah, I think Royal Alchemy especially. Very happy about the Dark Archon in the remastered. Have I actually seen one in a remastered game? I feel like I saw one in a regular non-remastered Brood War game, but... I can't remember for sure which one that was. It all looks the same in my brain. Gonna try to shut down this fifth base of Jadong. It's gonna force the cancel there, and the drone's gonna die too. So Gujila's up 195 to 144 supply. Looking so very, very strong, but guess what's up? The drops. All the drops. Oh, oh Storm. Storm is important here. Is the Archon gonna be able to use his ability is the question. Nope. Beautiful storms. The Reavers wrecking stuff to shut that thing down. No drops for you. Bit of an attack in the middle here with some lings, but Dragoons are clearing that thing up. Gujila handling that drop like the pro that he is. Fantastic play. Maelstrom was not done. So the Archon couldn't use it. Trying to set up a fifth base up here in the top section of the map. Corsair saying, you drop lords, get out of my house. Bam, two of them getting picked off. There's more injured ones here, too. Supply blocking Jadong. The plague on these units. Those zealots on top of the defilers and the lurkers. Gujila wins that battle handily. More lurkers coming in kind of to their deaths right now. What is happening? Gujila making stuff work. He's going to take down this fifth base. I don't see really anything that can stop this from happening. Oh, Jadong. Jadong in production. He's making ultras. He's got five ultras on the way here, but oh, forcing a cancel on that fifth. The fifth coming up in the bottom section of the map again for Jadong. 188 to 133 supply upgrades. Plus three attack, plus one armor on the Dragoons. Zealots, plus three attack, plus one armor because they share the same upgrades here. Shuttles with Reavers in them. Another hatchery going to be canceled. He's going to wait for that one to finish and then kill it. Ah, he waited for it to finish, and now he's going to kill it. Gujila in a really strong place. Archons are out. I am not sure that Ultras are going to work here. Not with Archons, not with Reavers, not with Zealots. Oh, boy. Reaver shot. Ow. 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 Poor Ultralisks. Just being oppressed here. Left to their own devices. They're just running out on the map willy-nilly. This Defiler is in a lot of trouble. It does manage to escape. It's trying to get... Oh, I got Reaver down. The Scarabs. The Scarabs causing major problems here. I can't even right now. Ultralisks on the army. Plague on everything too. But the Ultras are getting cleaned up quite nicely. Taking a Reaver with them in the process. Where did these Ultras go? They're heading down this direction. We'll have to see if they come around from the backside. Reavers just sieging up. No, 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 You can't leave the Reavers alone, though. Ah, the Ultra Ling. Are there any Defilers available? There's the Maelstrom. Oh, the Maelstrom Storm combination. Stopping the attacks from happening in their tracks and then hitting them while they're being stopped. Attack in the middle here. Dark Swarm is up. Archon does not care about your Dark Swarm. Lings and Ultras coming from the south side. Oh, I cannot believe this game right now. This Ultra does have five armor and two attack, but he's taking damage from the Archon. The splashes 
Uh, the direct damage, no, but the splash damage, yes. Is there any storm available on this High Templar? Yes, but he's just kind of A-moving in a situation here. Boof, big time hit. With that Scarab, that Ultra is down to 100 total hit points right now. Ling's rolling on up, just getting killed for no reason. Ujila's numbers on units killed in this game is going to be through the roof. It really is. More Ultras from Jadong. The Dark Archon waits for his chance to use Maelstrom. Once again, mind control not all that useful, it turns out. Oh, but from every side, Lings and Ultras getting that surround. Maelstrom on one of the Ultralisks, taking it out, storming everywhere. Dark swarms up, Reavers forced to come out of the shuttles to deal with this thing. The Dark Archon getting smashed directly in the face. He is going to get taken out. He's got to get out of there if he's not. Reavers, goodbye. Shuttles, goodbye. Scourge taking them down. A couple Archons showing up, but that's not going to be enough. Zealots, maybe. Oh, the Dark Archon lived. How is he alive? I don't know, but the High Templar gets picked off there. And the Ultras decide they don't want to pick a fight outside of Dark Swarm, so they decide to move on out. This game is bananas, you guys. Oh, is this a drop? No. Thank goodness it's not a drop, but... Oh, well, the unit showed up anyway. Canceling all the things at this attempted fifth base. For Gujila. Nope. Cracklings, man. Three... Alright, good hits there. Dark Archon here is just kind of messed with the AI, I think. Can they save the Nexus is the question! No! They get the Nexus. And the Ultra pays the ultimate price for it. Wow. What a get by Jadong. Taking that base down. He's got multiple expansions down along the southern section of the map. Fifth base and sixth base are running quite happily. Thank you very much. So Archon and Dark Archon running around together like they're brothers or something. Overlord... Just scouting, trying to see what's up, trying to see where Gujila is. More lings running around. Are they cracklings if they only... Oh, they do have full upgrades. But if they only have, like, plus two armor, are they still cracklings? I don't know. I don't know if they are. Lurker is a big problem right now. Storming his own units a little bit. There was Jadong. Oh. All right. Plus three attack, plus two armor, plus one shield for Gujilo. He's got Storm, he's got Archons, he's got Reavers. 19 kills, two kills on you. You're slacking, man. Couple free Ultras up here, though. Oh, maybe. Can it get out? Uh, yes, it does get out of there with 12 total hit points. Storming the Lings, and then the Ultras are easier to deal with here. Dark Swarm is up, though. Storming regardless. Where did the Reavers go? Oh, they weren't in this army. That's right. All right. Well, Storm Archon Splash trying to do stuff anyway here. Dark Archon has 47 energy. Archon smashing against the Ultra. That reminds me of the introductory cinematic for the Legacy of the Void campaign for StarCraft 2. There's an Ultra versus Archon battle that's incredible. If you haven't seen that, you should go watch it. Oh, the Dark Archon's gone. Seriously, even if you're just a Brood War fan. Oops, Scourge taken down an Observer there. Uh, go Google Legacy of the Void Introductory Cinematic on YouTube. It's a thing of beauty. It really, really is. Okay, 140 to 144 supply. Jadong has taken the lead, which is not good for Gojila right now. He is continuing to replace Reavers, getting High Templar here too. Getting shield batteries, actually. At some place. Yeah, trying to defend this fifth base of his. Four, five. Yep, five bases there. Ling's Ultra is running around willy-nilly. Jadong is. He's trying to make this thing happen. Oh, free reaver shots. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Don't waste scarabs on a single zergling. Thank you. Picked up. Ling's running north again. They really want to kill this base. There's reavers. There's cannons. Ultra goes down almost immediately here. Oh, and the drops. Oh, the drops. Okay. Well, ugh. Dark Swarm is up. Ultralisk is attacking. Everybody on fire. I think this base is not long for the world. Storm trying to do stuff here too, but Ultras on top of probes is never something that you want to see. This fifth base is toast. It is the toast right now. Ultralisks, six kills. Ultralisks, four kills. Ultralisks, six kills. Seven kills there. Yeah, this is just... This belongs to the Zerg now. I'm sorry, Gujila. I know you had a base. These probes are... Heroically trying to mine and then getting destroyed too. Shield battery. Don't feel like it did a whole lot. 
more cracklings just cruising up here to help but not really much to do anymore for you guys and it's 151 to 124 supply jadong is up jadong is strong he's winning engagements he's taking down bases he's keeping his bases alive his micro is incredible full energy defiler i just gujila what do you have left man is this your army is this it Zealots joining the party. Got a couple defensive reavers here at his third base location. Fourth base. Wait, one, two, whatever numbers these are. I think this is the fourth. And this is... Oh, but that's the... Ah, counting. Counting, you guys. I know you get after me for this, but yes, counting. Here comes the drop into the main. Can Gujila hold it as he did previously? Lot of storm. Cannon shots not doing a lot under the dark swarm here. And that's the... That is the... He. Ooh, Scarab hits though. Ow, ow. Ultra is down. Defensive Scarab pretty good. Here's the attack from the north actually pulling back a little bit. His Jadong does not like what he sees here with this number of Archons. And decides it is time to retreat. Man, this Dark Swarm lasts forever, doesn't it? It really does. Another hatch comes up. I don't think that's... Is that even centered properly? Maybe it is. Maybe it is. That Vespine Geyser is in a weird location. That's a long distance to mine here. But it's 160 to 141 supplied. Gujila has taken another lead, but he's running out of stuff to mine from. He's got these two bases that are mining still, which is great. He's still getting gas income from these expired assimilators because you still get two gas per trip from those. So might as well keep workers on them. If you've got the workers to spare, and Gujila does. He really does. He wishes he had the space remaining, but he doesn't. Both players keeping their money so stupid low. So incredibly low. All right, here comes our engagement in the middle of the map here. Splitting his units, pre-splitting them as Jadong. So that storm won't catch a whole huge group of them. And surrounds are really good anyway. Look at him sneaking along that right side. Here we go. There's the plague. And we're coming with some of the units here. I think there's more stuff that could come join the party, but they're not interested in helping. And Gujila wins that battle quite nicely. What is going on? All right, Gujila trying to stab on down. The Dark Swarm is too good. The Storm is too good. And both players because I just call it a stalemate here. 174 to 139 supply. Dark Swarm using, being used defensively here to this point and actually throwing down a hatch at Gujila's old base is the Jadong. Scourge getting some hits off. Ultras on top of Reavers is not what you want. Another Reaver went down there. 17 kills on that guy, though. It's pretty good stuff. One kill there, two kills there, three kills there. If it's just Reaver and you don't have the support, man, that's a nice plague, too. Ultra goes down anyway, though. Man, all these guys are in the reds. Gujila pulling back. Being patient, being strong, he can probably reestablish that base in the top left if he tries really, really hard. Oh, he waits for the hatch to finish again before killing it. Another hatch down for Jadong, but I don't know how much he actually cares at this point. So he kills that hatchery. Wasn't really anything going on anyway from it. Archons versus Overlords. And here we go, marching down from the north, storming the Hydras on the right. We've got Reaver hits all over the place. Storm inside of the Dark Swarm here. Zealots making it happen. It looks like Kojila is going to win this battle. By golly, he does. Reinforcement is trying to come up this ramp. That is a really terrible place to come up. Jadong recognizes that. He doesn't try to come up the ramp. Lurker hanging out. Gujila attacking on in to these sunken colonies who don't benefit from upgrades. So he's going to crush these quite easily. Lurker coming on down. Reavers left alone. Oh, Reavers need to live. Reavers need to live. And they are with so low HP on this guy. Seven shields and two everything else. Ling's trying to get up on top of these Reavers to finish them. One goes down. Another one fighting hard. Still attacking this natural base of Jadong. Archon's at the top of the ramp to make sure the reinforcements can't get in here and get a surround. And Gujila is looking strong. More Lings, more Lurkers in production. Six Ultras on the way from Jadong. Hydra's finishing off a small group of Dragoons left in the middle of the map all by themselves. Gujila happy about killing these tech structures that would be good. 
He's happy about killing the natural, but dude, killing this tech structures might slow things down a little bit. Ow. That didn't... Okay. He's got another engagement here. Hydroling versus Zealot Dragoon. And once again, Gujila wins that battle. This is a lot of Archons that he has. 14 kills, 12 kills, 7 kills, 8 kills, 127 to 135 supply. Jadong is up. It's mostly those Ultralisks that he's been pumping out when we weren't paying attention. All right, Ultra versus Archon here. The Dark Swarm is incredibly important right now. Where is it? Where is the Dark Swarm? Great Lings, though. On top of these Ultras, on top of the Hydras. Is it going to be enough, though? The Archon's doing that 40 damage per shot. 39 damage per shot here, but too many Ultras. Not even using Dark Swarm in this final battle is Jadong, and that's your good game. Kuchila is out. Jadong flexing, winning that final engagement with Ultras versus Archons and didn't even toss down a single Dark Swarm. Look at this guy. Did he have enough for a Dark Swarm anyway? He, uh, No, he didn't, so maybe that's why. But it worked out. It worked out in the end. Boy, Jadong, you scary. You so, so scary there. Using the Ultras. like how you can see these blades are kind of serrated in the remastered edition of this game, right? Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense there. What a great game from Gujila, though. He won so many battles. Killed so many Zerg units, but he couldn't kill hatcheries. He couldn't slow down the economy of Jadong. Jadong, once he lost an army, just able to make another one. No big deal. Dark Swarm was beautiful. Out of Jadong. And that's kind of what helps get you the win. Let's check out the final scores here. 956 units made by Jadong in 30 minutes. Only killed 212 and lost 700 of them, but he still won. And then resources, yeah, Jadong, 23 to 17, 55 to 47, and 78 to 64. Just more, 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 more. Could afford to be less cost efficient. And by golly, that was the case today. All right, so that's going to be it from me. This is Ben Falcon Paladin. Coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.